so I am on the beaver kill in upstate New York in the Catskills. Uh, it's June. Absolutely beautiful outside. It's probably 72. The water is super, super low and clear. Uh, I have a generic waltz worm on the bottom. Uh, and uh, size 16, I got an 18 France fly on top. Just very two dull, generic looking flies. I have 6X on right now. I may go to 7X. I've probably caught uh, four or five small browns. But we'll see how we do today. It is, it is uh, kind of tough just because it's super low, but I think we'll catch some fish. I had a really nice one on here a minute ago. Water temperature is about 64 degrees. It's supposed to get down. To, oh, there's a fish. Oh, it's a decent one too. Nice fish. Nice fish, real nice one. Is it rainbow? I believe it's a rainbow. No, it's a brown, wow. Ah, nice beaver kill brownie there. Real nice, pretty, pretty fish. Hit that generic waltz. Well, that's a solid fish right there. It's a nice, 14 inch fatty right there. Look at that guy. What a beauty. Thank you, Mr. Brown. I don't know what I was saying there. Uh, I think I was saying the water temperature is 64 degrees. Tonight, I think it's supposed to get down to 50. So I think tomorrow, uh, tomorrow, it's just the water temperatures are gonna be really, really nice because the high is gonna be about 70. So let's see if we can get some more out of here. I tell you, I just, uh, I come to the Catskills once a year with my wife and um, I know the West Branch of the Delaware, it gets a lot of press as it should. I mean, it's awesome, but in the beaver kill, it used to be the gem of the Catskills and it just, it just doesn't get the love anymore. And I just love fishing the beaver kill just because of, I don't know, the history of it. I mean, you've had every famous fly fishermen i mean this is where fly fishing really started in the u.s and there's been some unbelievably famous fishermen that have fished it and a lot of famous flies we still use today were invented right here on these banks so i just love fishing the beaver kill it's just it's just a cool place oh that is a really nice drift in there right on that scene there, there we go. Oh man, I don't know if you saw that cider pop on screen. That was a great hit. That wind, I probably should have held off on that cast. The wind's pretty bad right now. At sometimes when you're fishing and the wind pops up, every now and then you should just kind of wait, wait it out, let that big gust come by, and then go ahead and make your cast once it's gone by. We, a lot of times when you're fishing, you know, some certain areas, um, you know, you're only going to get one really decent cast in there, especially if there's a nice fish in there. You don't want to waste it and have the wind rip your bugs through the drift. So sometimes you want to hold off, wait till the gust dies down, then go ahead and make your cast. And I clearly made a mistake there because I had a nice hit and then I threw back and the wind yanked my bugs through the drift. Coming right through this little chute. Right on that edge there. Oh, that was a good drift. I hit bottom right there. I'm doing a lot of water load casts here just because of the wind. And you can see when you water load cast how easy it is to flip your bugs upstream. Super easy. It's nice eddy right here. Just gotta hold some fish.
Here we go. A little brownie. That whole area out there in the middle, that just looks really nice. It's got depth and it's moving and those water, the fish are in the moving water right now because the temperature is, you know, like I said, it's right around 64 degrees right now. And they've definitely moved up in these riffles. That area over here looks really nice. Get it right down that scene. There we go. Decent fish, too. Decent fish. Real nice fish. Looks like a nice brown again. Oh, you got off. You mother. That was a nice 15 incher. They're hitting that generic wall. It's just a size 16, simple, generic wall. It's right there. It's a three, I got a uh, three mil inverted bead, size 16. And when I say generic wall, it's, it's uh, I just use the thread as the ribbing and that's it. Absolutely no shine, no flash in the, uh, Hair's ear. There's another fish. Look at that. I was tight to the cider and he hit it as soon as it hit the water. Small guy. Watch, I'll get this one in. I lose the nice one and I <laughs> get the small one. That's the way it always is, right? Ah, little ones need love too. But I tell you, if you don't have any generic flies in your box, for clear water conditions, you definitely need them in there. You can't always have shine and flash in every fly. I My Penn's Creek video I did a couple weeks ago, um, the day I was fishing, I was using a uh, blue paradigm, but that week I saw a lot of weather and I had a lot of success on just generic waltz worms and generic pheasant tails that week. Anytime the sun came out, that's what I went to, and I caught a ton of fish on those that week. Okay, I dropped back down, and now I'm gonna go out. <clears throat> I fished all this edge, came back down, and now I'm going out just to fish the area I haven't hit. Wind is wreaking a little havoc. I might have to wait up a little yeah i'm gonna have to do that it's a good rip there though see the wind is stalling it out right there it's tough all right <clears throat> beat up all right i got a waltron still with a 3-3 bead just to compensate for this wind. Kind of lean your rod into the wind. I can feel it ticking bottom now. A lot of times in the wind, you gotta fish straight upstream right back to you. It's easier to fight the wind that way. A lot of times you can just put your cider into the water because it gives the surface current something to grab onto so you can steady it it's not perfect but you can steady it a little bit more in the wind if your water haul really leaning into it have my cider just in the water All pretty much water haul cast. Really simple. Pop it upstream, there's a fish right there. As you can see, I mean, I was tight to the cider right away. 
and he was on it. So if I had a lot of slack, if I had a lot of slack in that cast and I was trying to catch up, I would have never felt that fish at all. Thank you, Mr. Brownie, little guy. So it's not the ideal way of fishing, but you have to do what you have to do in the wind. So once again, I'm making upstream casts, fishing back towards me, trying to keep contact. So I'm making water haul casts, flipping it upstream, and right away I'm working that slack back towards me, and I'm tight right away. So it's really cutting down what the wind can do to the leader. Really leaning into it. I am leaning into the wind hard. Really have that cider buried in the water. That wind is really kicking and I just, you know, I got tight to it and I had to put the cider in the water to help me combat the wind. Nice jump. Looks like a beautiful beaver kill rainbow. Nice, nice fish. Real nice fish. what he hit here. Well, I tell you, these rainbows, they just flat out fight. Yeah, I'm gonna come up. Hit the dropper. Nice fish. Nice fish. Nice chunker, man. What a beautiful rainbow. It's a beautiful wild fish. Nice 14 incher. Look at that guy. What a beauty. What a beautiful. He hit the uh, France fly, the dropper. So once again, he was up in that that pocket, that fast water, but I've got a severe upstream wind, so I made the cast, and in the air I adjusted downstream, held my rod, really leaned it into the wind, and I let my cider in the water, and I just tried to stay ahead of it, and that's all you can do in the wind just to compensate, but sometimes, 99.99% <laughs> of the time, you don't want your cider in the water unless you're dipping it to get to depth, but sometimes you have to get it in the water at a severe angle to combat the wind because that surface current will grab onto the heavier cider and you can really get an anchor there. And that's what I did there. I, I was tight to it and boom, he nailed it. Good stuff. That looks like a really nice riff right there. Good water too. There we go. Right by the rock. Nice, decent fish, too. Well, no. Seems a lot bigger. You're right, right at the end of that drift in front of that rock. There's my wife. Well, I was fighting that fish. It was a decent rainbow, or I'm sorry, a decent brown. <laughs> it was about 14 inches, and uh, my battery went dead. So let's get, a, get out here and get another. It's like this super fast water, but you can see that rock right there. And he was right in front of that rock and forms a cushion right in this fast water. There's gonna be another fish out here though, I know it.
I know I talk a lot with my cigar in my mouth, and maybe I should do a closed caption so you can understand what I'm saying. It's a good drift right through there. There we go. Right in that fast water. Oh, I missed them. Or I just lost them. There's a rainbow. <coughs> Tight to it right away, leading the cider through the drift. And these are, this is a 25 foot cast to make them, by the way. Okay, I switched spots. <clears throat> I'm on the other side of the river now. I just couldn't really access this water. It was just a little bit, a little bit too deep, a little bit too strong. So <clears throat> let's see here what we do now. There's one. <clears throat> Little brownie hit the dropper. Hit the France fly. There you go. Thank you, Mr. Brown. He was right here in front of me in that deep, this deep cut right in front of me. There's another one. Same spot. Hit the dropper again. <laughs> another little brown. See, you can get up on these spots just as long as you use a little stealth. Water's super clear. There's a little shelf in front of me here. And uh, it's deep enough where I just was able to slip right up here and get a nice vertical cider right in front of me. Let's see if I can get another one, a little bigger one. Look for their big brother. Let's see if I can do that. Hat trick here. Nope. There we go. Almost a hat trick. Boy, that's a dark brownie. He was clearly under a rock there. Super, super dark. Look how dark that little guy is. Almost a hat trick. That was three fish, four cast. Clearly, they're stacked right here. It's a good spot. Nice deep little cut. There's an, oh, God. Small ones. There we go, that's a bigger fish. A little bigger. Not by much, but not bad. Respectable. It's a dark, dark fish. I'm in a good spot. Respectable brownie. Just a generic waltz worm. Generic hare's ear. Yes, sir. Sometimes you say waltz worm, and uh, a lot of old timers don't know what that is. So you just say hare's ear. Let's see how many more I can get out of this cut here. Vertical. 
here we go. There's another one. A lot of small dudes. <laughs> You're welcome to come over. You're welcome to come over here. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> That's it. All right, let's see, let's see. Get one more and then let's move on. These are small guys in this hole. Time to move on in a second here. You know, my dad said never leave fish to catch fish. And a lot of times we all do that. funny most of these fish look at that guy most of these fish I haven't felt um, it's just my cider jump every single time all right we're leaving fish to catch fish that was fun though I just moved up just a little maybe they're bigger up here there's a little bit bigger Respectable brownie. Pretty guy, though. Boy, he's... God, he is pretty. The colors on that guy. Just beautiful, beautiful colors. There we go. <clears throat> just really nice and deep over here to the left a little better a little brownie I tell you these brownies are pretty though big I always find a big difference between freestone brownies and limestoners they just free stoners they almost have um they have a lot of silver to it almost all right let's get another one up here actually you know what i'm going to change my fly i'm going going go a little lighter here because i don't have the wind and i'm just going to ride this current back to me so i'm going to put two two threes on and just ride it in the current okay so i put two two point threes on and I'm just gonna do upstream casts and just ride it right back. Just let the current take my bugs down to me. Just keep a tight cider. Just riding kind of mid column right now. Oh God, oh, that was a decent fish, damn it. Yeah, they're hitting the mergers here. I can see them. Mm. Damn. The hell did I miss that one? Wailed it. All right. Sometimes when you're on the stream, and you know you're in a fishy spot and you get a couple hits sometimes you just got to kind of refocus concentrate on your cast and get a good drift there we go just like that <clears throat> see those fish are up in the column i can actually see them going after emergers and uh terrible net job so even though I feel like I could have got them on my heavier fly, uh, I just like the idea of kind of riding it in that current. So they're coming up off the bottom. I can still see them out there. Nice bow on my cider. There we go. See, I didn't even feel it hit. I just saw my cider 
just tighten a little bit. Let's work this deep water right here. Beautiful deep run right here. There we go. <clears throat> You're getting a lot of these cookie cutter browns now. Not bad. Not bad, 10 inches. little deep through here with some current I might beat up here I'm gonna work the upper column first and then I'll go low there we go it's a better fish it's on the dropper He's a pretty guy, he's not bad. 11 inches. Okay, I got a fish on. It was dangling in the water and I'm all tangled. <laughs> and he hit it. <laughs> That's when you know you're having a good day when you uh, release the fish, let the flies dangle behind you, and they wail it. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Brown. Oh, man. You know, the sun is just straight overhead and I imagine in the evening, when the sun starts setting, it's gonna get a little better. Well, I know I'm catching a ton, but I mean, the bigger fish might come out to play, but I never got here till like one. So, oh, trust me, I'm not complaining. Cause I'm having a heck of a day. It's fun. I know there's a bigger fish out here though. All right, I put a little bit, I put a heavier bead on just to get down here. This is heavy water and it's got some depth. Just need a little bit better drift. It's a good drift right in there. There we go. I'm gonna have to re-rig on this one. That's a big tangle job. Actually, I'm gonna move over here. A little depth over here. I think they're, I gotta work this little eddy a little bit better than I did before. I'm in a better spot now.
That's a nice drift right there. There we go. <laughs> I am in the cookie cutters now. that dropper I'm gonna take a couple more casts here and I'm gonna move I am in some small fish once again my dad says don't leave fish to find fish but I think I'm getting greedy now going right to that gut Here we go. Oh, this is a big fish. This is a big fish right here. Well, my dad says don't leave fish to find fish, and this is why. <laughs> I knew there was I knew there was some big fish in. I mean I've gotten them. But this is a nice one. Nice brownie. Nice brownie. Nice brownie. Nice, nice fish. Well, good thing I didn't leave. Boy, he is a chunk. He is a chunk right there. Boy, look at that guy. Nice 15 incher right there. Nice 15 incher. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Thank you, Mr. Brown. So I'm going to be calling it quits here on the beaver kill. Uh, what a great afternoon. I mean, I caught a ton of fish. A lot of them were small, but I did manage to catch uh, about five or so really nice, solid fish, 14, 15 inches. Caught a really nice, beautiful brown, 15 or so, and uh, caught that awesome rainbow. That was, that was a sweet fish. Um, tough conditions, really sunny, low, clear water. Um, and um, I tell you, when you encounter, and it was really windy at times too, so uh, I hope you learned something from this video, especially uh, kind of fighting the wind. I mean, we can't always pick the perfect conditions when we go fishing, so you just gotta kind of adapt. So um, hopefully you picked up a few pointers of uh, you know fishing in the wind, and uh, my big suggestion is make sure you have in your box uh, some really dull drab flies. I mean, I caught a ton on just a very, simple waltz worm no flash at all and then uh, that was on my point fly and then my dropper fly um i was using a france fly once again just just drab brown olive with a hair's ear collar silver bead um i hope you enjoyed this video uh if you did uh, appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up i appreciate it if you would subscribe and as always thanks so much for the support and uh tight lines everybody see you later